Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. So, this video is going to be on this couple. Their story has been going around, it's going around for maybe like the last like couple weeks, uh, that has $718,000 in student loan debt. For what? Well, it's a projected figure, um, which I'm going to talk a little bit about their backstory and we're going to get to how that's their projected figure of debt. So, this story has been going on for a while. I didn't make a video before now um, because you guys know I was kind of like resting after my trip and I was also sort of watching, um, not to say the story unfold, but I was just sort of like watching people's opinions um, on it and I just found it to be really interesting as like time went on. I was like following it um, kind of like in, in the media and uh, online and reading. Um, like some threads about it and talking to people about it in real life and just kind of seeing what people thought about this story before I wanted to film this video. You know me, I, you guys know I like to like wait and take my time. Um, so the backstory. Okay, so this woman, a couple weeks ago she wrote uh, in the Huffington Post, which is now HuffPost, they've like rebranded or whatever, at, about how her and her husband um, have two kids and they have an uh, estimated projected Seven hundred eighteen thousand dollars worth of debt. I can't even say that figure without stumbling over my words because it is such an astronomical figure of debt. So they have seven hundred eighteen thousand dollars worth of debt. I was talking about this with my friend in real life. She hadn't heard this story. The first thing she said to me was, "Are they white?" I was like, "No, they're black." <laughs> so it is a black couple, and. The wife wrote about uh, basically what happened to them in this piece for HuffPost. So she talks about how they were, you know, childhood sweethearts. He had braces as a child. She knew ever since she seen his braces and his big ears that they were going to be, you know, soulmates, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. They go to school, you know, uh, middle school, high school, college. They both get undergraduate degrees. So she degrees in English. He degrees in biology, right? They went to just like sort of fine, regular, reputable schools for their undergraduate degrees. But here's where the plot thickens. He wants to be a dentist. This is like linked to him having braces when he was younger and, you know, wanting, you know, knowing since he was like a little kid that he wanted to be a dentist and her knowing since she was a teenager that, you know, he was going to be a dentist. He was going to help provide stability in her life. She talks about being one of five children growing up in poverty. Uh, that her mother was a single parent and she was sort of growing up in this impoverished household. She talks about her uh, boyfriend, obviously now husband, his family issues, um, his parents had a successful marriage, but uh, he sold real estate and ended up getting involved in a real estate scam. Uh, that part is not mentioned in the piece, but she mentions that his father went to prison and how that sort of uh, became a catalyst for a lot of things in their lives. Um, so basically, these were two people that were looking for stability, you know, and they, she talks in the essay about how, especially in the black community, uh, we talk about how, like, education is, you know, especially higher education is, it's the key, it's, you know, it's, it's everything, right? I've done several videos on a lot of my feelings about higher education. As someone that does have a degree, I have a bachelor's in journalism. So... Uh, she talks about how they came from these sort of tumultuous backgrounds and were encouraged to go to college, but were not really given very much financial guidance. So as I was reading this piece and hearing how things sort of unfolded, sorry, I keep tapping the table, I felt, and as I kind of watched the story unfold, I felt like people sort of fell into two camps about this story. And a lot of that I feel like is because the story sort of has like two main points of view. So you had the one camp that felt like these people are fucking idiots. <laughs> the Brokey McBrokersons. I hate, like, I feel bad for them because they have a lot of debt and they have two children and they're black. Like, I don't think, like, I especially, I don't think anyone should be saddled with that much debt, but especially not fucking black people and especially not black Americans. Like, we should probably, definitely, absolutely uh, go to school for free and get a free education, especially considering we were specifically denied an education under under law, right? Like by the rules of the government. Uh, under law and the rules of the government, we should receive 
a free education, absolutely. And this is actually like a white urban legend. A lot of white people believe that we do get free education. Um, I've met fucking white people in real life that have been like, you guys get free education. I'm like, no, the fuck we don't. What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? And they like, oh, I thought because you were black, you got free education. It's like even white motherfuckers know. But it seems like on the one hand, you have people that feel like they had no financial planning. They had no financial acumen. They made a series of terrible choices. One right after the other, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And instead of taking a step back and making a financial plan, right, or at least looking at the decisions that they were making and the hole that they were digging themselves deeper and deeper into, they just continued to dig, right? They just, like, kept on with the shovels and continued to dig. They had absolutely no self-awareness, which can be frustrating when you're reading a piece that kind of has this, like, woe is me, you know, I'm buried under debt. It's like, but you also need to take a share of the responsibility for just making bad decisions. You you made poor decisions, right? That's like one camp. The other camp are the education's too expensive, which is true. You know, student loans are a completely unregulated industry where, you know, you don't have to get financial planning, right? They just encourage you to take out more and more and more and more and more and more and more. We also do live in um a community as black Americans that does encourage us to go to school and get an education and an education is absolutely important but we don't get the how of like how to accomplish that you know like we just oh get an education and then it's like how <laughs> like I don't know how to pick a school I don't know what I want to major you know we are talking about 17 and 18 year olds you know teenagers for the most part um, what am I going to major in? What school am I going to pick? How do I know what I can afford? How can I know? Should I go public? Should I go private? Um, now all of this information is readily available on the internet, but you do, again, you have to kind of know where to start and how to sort of dig around and how to like figure things out, which a lot of people do every day. So this is not to discount the people that figured it out. Cause like there are people that figure it out every day without burying themselves in debt, but student loan debt is a huge and it's an ever growing ever expanding crisis and in my series of videos that I've done previously about higher education a lot of the times I encourage teenagers fresh out of high school not to go to college people don't like to hear especially black people they we have this like sort of emotional investment um, in college where it's sort of like we believe we're gonna go to college and money is gonna start raining down from the sky and that's not how it works college needs to be seen as an investment um, into a career into you know a future and things of that nature and a lot of the times when you're just getting out of high school you you just don't know you don't know how to do anything you don't know what's going on and you're expected to make a lot of these really large sort of life-altering decisions which I also think is like a um, a weird you know from a philosophical and a um, societal standpoint our society is a lot different than it was maybe 50 years ago when, you know, fresh out of high school, you could get a job working in a factory and get married right out of high school and have a kid and support your family, you know, off that job. Um, you know, and so it kind of maybe made a little bit more quote unquote sense, but really not, not even then, to start giving, you know, 17 and 18 year olds this type of responsibility to make these life decisions because it was like, well, you know, previously people these age were running a household. It's like, but then you can even look like, well, you know, should we be running households at that age, you know? So um, I see like sort of both sides of the situation. Again, let me get back to the story. What ended up happening was they went to undergraduate. They got their undergraduate degrees. They had about forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of debt between the two of them. Let's say like twenty five, twenty five, right? For her degree in English, his degree in biology. She even says in the article from you know from step one, she sort of picked a school sight unseen because they sent a brochure to her house. That was the school she was going to go to, right? Again, so kind of like preying on. The higher education system is very predatory, right? So kind of like preying on students that don't have a lot of acumen or understanding of what to do in this type of situation. Um, after, you know, they got married while they were finishing up college and they had their degrees. They had a birth control error, her words. They slipped up and they had a oops baby, right? Now... They already had their undergraduate degrees. He has one in biology from a, like a reputable school, regular school. She has one in English from a regular school. They fucked up and had a baby. At this moment in time, I feel like it's where they made their first really big financial mistake. When they slipped up and had the baby, the first thing they both should have done is went to work, right? 
She could get a job teaching English. She could get a job teaching bio, teaching science, teaching whatever, so they can get some steady paychecks coming in, at least for the first few years of their child's life, right? So they can have some money coming in, maybe build up some savings, make the payments on their student loans, pay it off. There are a lot of loan forgiveness programs for teachers, uh, also for people that go into public works. So maybe they could also go into some kind of public works with a plan to get their degrees relieved in 10 years. I think, you know, that's what it is. I think it's 10 years if you go into public service, right? They should have made a plan from there. Once they had their, you know, accident baby or whatever, like, okay, well, we have a kid now. We need to, like, really double down and do some financial planning. Okay. No. <laughs> he fit, He tried to get into dental school twice. He took the test twice. He failed the test twice. He decided to switch gears and get an MBA. He went to a for-profit school to get his master's of business. A for-profit school is different from an accredited nonprofit, which are the schools that generally uh, people go to. So a for-profit school is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, you pay exorbitant amounts uh, to go, and it's they're generally geared towards people who maybe didn't have high enough GPAs to attend a nonprofit school, or maybe they didn't have the financial resources uh, at the time to attend a nonprofit school. Maybe now they have a little bit more finances. They want to go back. They want to utilize skills that they already have. Or it's sort of it's almost like a like a an in between you know kind of way to get into higher education. But a lot of for profit schools uh, have been really controversial as like scams because they're like very exorbitantly priced a lot of the times. A lot of the times they make false promises uh, of jobs. You know, we can get you a job. You know, they inflate their numbers. There's a lot of kind of like really scuzzy stuff out there about for-profit schools. They're strictly for-profit, right? A non-profit school is at least supposed to be in the business of education, right? Of giving you an education, right? A for-profit school is just in the business of making money, right? It's a, it's a purely capitalist model, even though, again, the nonprofits are really not that far away because tuition at nonprofits is, is unregulated as well. So it just keeps going up and up and up. But for profits generally don't have the same type of accreditation. A lot of the times the credits don't move from one school to another. You know, it's kind of just a way to, they call them like diploma mills. And this is not to like shade anybody that's been to a for profit because like I also know people that have gone to for profits and have been able to, you know, like use that. So, but a lot of the times they call them diploma mills because they kind of just, you know, you pay the money, you take the classes from the school and like you get a degree, yes, but like a lot of the times the credits are not good at other schools. They don't transfer. Again, if they're not accredited, then like that degree doesn't really like move in the system that you're trying to move in if you're trying to pursue higher education, you feel me? So when he didn't get into dental school, which he tried twice and didn't get in, he decided to switch gears and get an MBA. He paid an exorbitant amount of money, well over $100,000, because they're exorbitantly priced for this master's business degree. So now their their debt is just like ticking up, it's ticking up. They started off with about forty dollars to $50,000 worth of debt between them. Now he just paid more, two hundred k for an MBA, right? So now they're at two fifty. dollars she then writes in the essay that she herself sort of succumbed to this um, social media comparison, like comparing herself to other people on social media, right? She's like, you know, I see people that are going to school, they're setting up homes, you know, they're traveling, they're taking trips, you know, they're doing this, they're doing that. And I'm sitting at home alone, you know, I'm pregnant with my oops baby and I'm broke, you know, so I, I felt like she, her exact words were, I felt like I had an emotional void. And so she decided to go back to school also to a for profit, right? in order to get a master's, to fill an emotional void, right? I'm jealous of the people that I'm seeing on fucking Instagram and social media. I want to look like I'm doing something with my life too, so let me go get a fucking master's for no reason, even though I'm already in the hole with my student loan debt, right? But I so desperately need to keep up with people on social media and have them think that I'm doing good, that I'm going to go back and get a random fucking expensive ass masters that might not even be worth shit because I'm getting it from a for-profit school. And they're attending these for-profit schools because like a lot of the times, again, like for-profit schools will take even like terrible students. Like he did not pass the test twice for dental school. Like I'm not going to say he's a terrible student, but obviously like his grades were not up to par. Like they were not up to snuff. But it's basically like you pay more money you go to the for-profit school and now you have an MBA that you can put on a resume, like even though technically you know you 
you kind of like got around, you know, having to go to like a more accredited school in order to get it. So, but you paid out your asshole for it. She ended up sort of doing the same thing with this master's. Oh, I'm going to just like pay a hundred thousand dollars get a master's degree from, from a for-profit school so I can look like I'm doing something, right? So now y'all are in the hole, 350K, right? While they're doing this, in her essay, she makes no mention of neither one of them getting a job, right? To support themselves and to support their baby that eventually came. So they were obviously living off of their student loans. This is also something that I have seen people do personally in my real life. This is also a reason why I know a lot of people like going to for-profit schools. They help you with the financial aid. You can take out the max amount of student loans and then live off of it. But a lot of people do treat student loans like as if they're it's just free money that they're never going to have to pay back, right? It's sort of like, well, let me take out the max. And then I knew somebody that did this. They were going to school, they took out the max, and then they would live off the student loan money for the whole school year because this person was like, well, I don't want to have to work while I'm in school. I don't want to have to worry about working. I want to just focus on my studies. So I'm just going to like take out the max amount of student loan and like use that as my finances. And I remember thinking like, yo, this is wild. Like you do know you're going to have to pay this money back. You're going to have to pay this money back. Now student loans are a motherfucking scam. Yes. They're a motherfucking racket. Absolutely. They're totally unregulated. They let you take out all this money and balloon up your debt so that you will like, it's a scam, but like you're playing into the scam. Like, you think you're scamming the system by taking out the max amount and, like, living off of it. Like, haha, like, you're getting away with not working. But, like, really, like, bitch, the system is scamming you. You are not scamming the system, okay? Like, you you have to be smart. You have to, like, really think about it. Because, like, student loan debt does not get erased by bankruptcy. Student loan debt does not, especially if you have private loans. Now, federal loans, public loans generally are forgiven when you die. Private loans roll over. They will roll over to your spouse. They will roll over to your children. So it's like a lot of, we've been having a lot of conversations about legacy and like generational wealth. But in, and this was something she talked about in her essay, in the pursuit of generational wealth, right? Not just generational wealth, because obviously like her going to fulfill an emotional void and like all that stuff, that's not anything. That's like you trying to solve your personal problems with a degree, which a lot of people do. But she says, like, in our pursuit of trying to, like, get away from our tumultuous, you know, poverty-stricken sort of backgrounds and build generational wealth, we they ended up with basically what's going to become generational debt, right? Because these private loans are going to roll over to their, haha, became two children, right? So after she got her master's, he got his MBA, they had another baby, right? So that's another, that's like, another large financial I don't want to call someone's child a financial mistake but that was like another large financial mistake because children are fucking expensive right you already had one now you have a second one right so now you're three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt right both of their undergraduate degrees 50 his MBA 200 her master's 100 you're three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt with a second child, so now you have two children. Again, there is literally no mention of him getting a job. She says that she briefly held down a job, but when she had the second baby, she decided to be a stay-at-home mom to stay with her with her kids. So I know childcare is expensive. Maybe they couldn't afford childcare. There's a, there's a lot of, of stuff that seemed like it was left out of this essay because it was just kind of trying to like build up this narrative of like, we got fucked by student loans, edu higher education is a racket, student loans are a scam, all of which is true. But there's a lot that's like left out of the story because they clearly also themselves made poor financial decisions because her holding down a job for a little while is mentioned, but then she like left to be a stay-at-home mom to stay with her two kids. So again, now I know for a fact that like neither one of you are working so I'm you have two children and all this debt I'm 100% positive you're just taking out more loans and you're living off of them right so after they have the second child she's a stay-at-home mom he's received this expensive ass $200,000 MBA what does he decide he, he, he wants he just says he still wants to try and hold on to this childhood d dream of being a dentist ever since he himself had motherfucking braces on he goes for the dental exam one more time a third time he passes now he's preparing to take out an estimated extra three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars in student loans to pay for medical school, to pay for dental school, right? And they're hoping that by the end he will become a dentist, right? They're, they're, I hope they have a backup plan for if he fucking flunks out. He did have a hard time getting in. He did fail the test numerous times. There's like no guarantee that he makes it through, but 
they're relying on him getting through dental school and becoming a dentist and having a certain earning capacity to help them pay back their debt, which she even says, you know, she's like, we're planning on having, again, about 700, over 700K of debt by the time he finishes school. Even with his earning capacity, that's a lot of debt. And again, they also have two children, right? So now you have created generational debt. And she says, you know, in trying to get away from poverty, it seems like we circled back around to it because now we have this debt that's going to be, you know, handed down to our children. And then they bring up Bernie. This is why we're voting for Bernie because we want him to erase our debt, which just seemed like pure, like, political propaganda that just got thrown in there. But again, as I've seen people sort of having conversations about this, it seems like it, people fall into two camps, which is that they're so fucking stupid, they made nothing but terrible financial decisions camp. And then the, well, student loans and higher education is a scam and a racket and it needs to get regulated camp. The student loan bur bubble is going to burst, just like the housing bubble, just like the economy bubble. At some point, it's going to be no longer unsustainable. We're reaching critical mass very quickly. So obviously, you guys know I'm an anti-capitalist, and so my number one thing I want to say is capitalism. I've said in previous videos that I feel morally and ethically opposed in my gut to the capitalist structure of higher education, not higher education itself, not learning, right? I love education. I love learning. I even love, again, like higher education sort of like in theory, right? The concept of it, but like it should be free. It should especially be free for fucking black Americans, descendants of American chattel slavery. No ifs, ands, or buts. But I feel morally and ethically opposed to the concept of having to pay for education because it's inherently classist, right? You're, you're locking up education behind money, We've also seen, like, with this fucking uh, Operation Varsity Blues and shit like that, that people are also, again, paying money to get their kids that are dumb as a bag of rocks into these elite Ivy League schools. You know, there's all types of stuff that's, like, going on. It's a corrupt system. So there's a part of me that feels like, again, like, black Americans are holding on so hard into this system that is corrupt in so many ways. Not only should we, number one, just be going for free anyway, but it's like the system itself is already classist and corrupt and like it's classist, it's racist, like it's rooted against us, like period, Al already. Then if you throw in in addition to that, the fact that like tuition is unregulated, they can charge you whatever they want, the student loans are unregulated, they can let you take out, you know, a million dollars in debt and just be like, fuck it, I don't give a fuck, like you gotta pay that shit back, like it's a guarantee for the bank, can't file bankruptcy, can't get out of it, bitch, somebody but can't die, like, like, Sally Mae is like the mob, right? Like, bitch, I'm going to collect. How, how I collect is up to you. If it's not going to be you, if it's going to be your mom, if it's going to be your auntie, if it's going to be your kid, if it's going to be your husband or wife or whatever, like, but I'm going to collect or I'm breaking the kneecaps, right? That's true. <laughs> That's very real, you know? Shit being a racket and a scam is real, right? The issues with black black people and again especially black Americans sort of like circling back into creating more generational debt by trying to climb out using education is a is sick and it's a very real like like it's a real fucking thing and I wish that again as I've said previously instead of going straight to college from high school I only care about motherfucking black people obviously People could take away from this video whatever they want, but like that, I, I wish that like Black Americans would like sit down with our families and have a conversation about you know finances. <laughs> I have a conversation, but even a lot of the times, like our parents didn't have like a grasp of it. You know, like like we're 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 still in such unfamiliar territory um, in terms of you know being out from slavery. 150 160 years you know and and treading treading water um but i do wish that like more people would like attend a trade school pick up a trade pick up a skill something that can never be taken away from you that you can always utilize to make money right and then maybe get a job and work your way through school it is also hard to go back to school after you've taken time off and after you get a job a lot of the times so that's not to say that like even that is a perfect solution, but I do think that at least having a skill, having a little bit of job experience and having some money um, and ha just having some maturity, you know, to figure out what you want to do to try to prevent yourself from making these decisions. Because now, you know, these are people that are in their late 20s, early 30s that are saddled with two kids and this gigantic debt that's going to loom over them for the rest of their lives, you know, and 
there's so many moving parts as to how it happened. And, you know, again, like the student loan system being a scam, a lot of like higher education as a capitalist scheme being a scam, you know, believing that you're going to just get this education and money's going to fall from the sky. Cause like they're banking on him being a dentist and being able to like earn his way out of this. But like that, even that in and of itself is not a guarantee, you know, and the debt's already there. Like, you know, believing that you're going to get, you know, these, these certain types of jobs and they're automatically going to like guarantee you money. There's only a few jobs in those types of fields. It's just there's a lot of naivete and not a, enough like real actual discussion of like what is happening. And so I thought that this was a really interesting piece sort of highlighting a lot of the issues with uh, higher education and, and especially for black people and how, you know, you can end up creating generational debt while you're trying to attend school, but also how you can yourself take a, a margin of that into your own hands by doing some like responsible financial planning and like making the decision to like work, you know, or pick up a trade or, you know, I'm capping my, my student loans at X, Y, and Z. And if that means that I have to like take time off, save money and then go back, you know, like making like reproductive health choices, just like making choices, making choices and really taking the time to think about the choices that you make because like the motherfucking system is set up totally, completely against us, you know? And having an understanding that like, as black people, the system is against us, as black Americans, the system is against us, as poor people, the system is against us, you know, as descendants of American chattel slavery that have like a limited, you know, amount of, of, of time moving in these certain like circles and spheres as opposed to like other groups of people like that's against us a lot of things so you have to think smart like you really have to think smart as fuck when navigating these systems or just like become an electrician because like college is also not for everybody it's also been like hammered into us like go to college go to college go to college that's just not for everybody either so this is an interesting story that i've seen circulating around that i wanted to do a video on so if you've seen it, let me know what you guys think. I will include links in the description box. Please, with that, as always, see you guys next time.